Welcome to 10 Minute Tech. My name is Steve and in this one I'll be prepping my old X58 board for some liquid nitrogen that I'll be recording in the future. So this will be kind of a video series on setting this up and setting up this process for the first time. And hopefully I'll document that so if you're following along it'll be interesting to watch and maybe follow along too. So for this one I have an old Asus board. This is my personal board from you know almost 10 years ago. It was about 9 years ago in 2010 when this platform uh, was popular. And this is an ASUS board. It's the ASUS uh, P6X58DE. And in here I've got my old i7-930 uh, chip. And I lapped it myself about you know nine years ago. This chip still works to this day. And uh, the lapping didn't really make much of a difference back then. But maybe it's a, a good flat surface now to use for a liquid nitrogen pot. So hopefully that'll be something that will help us get some temperatures there. And I've already done the work and I know that this chip still works. What we're going to be doing in this video is taking all of the heat sinks, everything off the board, and then plastic dipping it to get it ready for condensation. And hopefully that'll help prevent us from having any issues. And let's just get right into it. So I didn't mention this in the intro, but I do have a couple processors that I'm going to try as well. So this is the original i7-930 that I had in the build when I originally built it back in 2010. Um, down the line I picked up, this is an X5675, or sorry, this is the X5675 chip. And this is a good upgrade path, it's an old Xeon, you know, back in the day these cost like $1,000, you can get them for about $50 on eBay now. And it's a 6 core processor, this is a 4 core. It does have its turbo, or its multiplier locked up to uh, I think 24 or 26. So on air you're not going to go much higher than that anyway but it doesn't make this a good candidate because you're stuck with base clock overclocking. Here is the workstation and it's a W3690. This has an unlocked multiplier so once we get our process all tuned I'll be using this chip to do the actual overclocking on liquid nitrogen. As far as RAM uh, these are the old green PCB sticks that I got in also 2010 uh, just old G-Skill 1600 RAM came in a pack of three. Uh, remember, so these old boards, they use triple channel. Most of the boards we have now on Z370, Z390, uh, those all use dual channel unless you get into the HEDT platforms. But the cool thing about this, it'll use triple channel. So I've got six sticks of two gigabyte DDR3 1600. They'll all run at about 1866. So I know that overclock will be good on all of them if I overclock the RAM as well which will help with overclocking. We'll have to see how that performs and how the IMC is on this chip. Um, but I know this chip was good at 1866 with all, all six slots populated, triple channel. So let's go ahead and move on into removing the heat sinks. So they made these really simple. Back in the day, there was you know, not a whole lot. There was just some thermal pads and some screws. So we'll go ahead and start removing screws. All right, there's some 10-year-old uh, thermal paste. Actually, it looks like it's okay. Old thermal pad on there. Now that everything is taken off of the motherboard, you can see here that the setup's actually a little different than in the PCH modeled boards that we have in you know newer platforms like Z390. So the old platforms actually had a north bridge and a south bridge. And what those did is connected all the stuff that talks to the CPU, the RAM, to the stuff that talks to PCI slots through the south bridge. And that's the all the other peripherals in the in the RAM down here. So 
These two chips will also generate heat. And you may notice that there's a whole lot of power stages on this board. And these days, um, they weren't as costly to make, I guess, and they really just loaded them up with power stages. And keep in mind, the i7-930 was actually a 130 watt TDP CPU. So that's more than you're seeing in the consumer chips now. Uh, Intel's identifying them as, a, uh, as 95 watts. But these older chips were 130 watt TDPs and that's the, the P2 rating. So after turbo boost wears off. So these things definitely draw a bit more power and you can tell even the PCBs on these older chips are quite a bit thicker. The actual chip is bigger and there's a whole, whole lot more um, of these surface mount capacitors on the back. So these older chips are, are pretty robust and you know they're still working to this day. So now we've got everything taken off, let's go ahead and clean it up and then we'll start the Plasti Dip. Okay, now that I got most of the thermal compound, that really old thermal compound was stuck on there pretty good. Now that I got all of that off on these uh, some North and South Bridge chips, I'm gonna take this outside, take it to the air compressor and blow off as much of the dust as I can and get it ready for Plasti Dip. All right, so now I got everything important all kind of covered up so I could take it outside and go hit it with the paint. All right, so we're back. I got a few coats of Plasti Dip on the motherboard and about to take everything off. Wanted to take a look at it first. This is after uh, about three coats. It's not perfect, but what we're really just looking for is insulation and if there were any condensation getting some liquid nitrogen or dry ice cooling on here that it's not gonna short anything out. So hopefully that took care of this. Let's take this off and see what it looks like. Okay, so there's the Plasti Dip is all peeled off now and you can see that uh, most of the places where it was right along the edge of some of these components, there's a little bit there. Um, not gonna affect anything too much and we can just kind of push it out of the way. If we're gonna put a heat sink back on these, we'll put thermal paste on them. Uh, but for right now, I just wanted to leave those open so they can uh, still be used with normal heat sink methods in the future. I went around this whole IO shield area just to save time. And if you really want to, you could take some Plasti Dip and go around these by hand. And I'll probably go around the socket itself just a little bit more so it's sealed around the socket um, with the bracket in place and then around the slots for the RAM sticks. That way you know absolutely nothing's going to get in there and uh, short anything out, hopefully. But this should in general create a pretty good barrier for all of the VRM components, all of these various capacitors and inductors that are around here, just to make sure that when you are using liquid nitrogen or dry ice on this, that nothing will short. So ice in itself won't conduct electricity, but the liquid water will. So that's, that's what you're worried about is just liquid water. Ice is fine. And uh, I did do through the whole back as well. It's been about three, three hours or so, two and a half hours. So it's mostly dry. Um, but a little bit sticky when I was peeling it off. So it probably could wait a little bit longer. It says about four hours on the bottle, but I was a little impatient and wanted to get this taken care of. I'm gonna go ahead and set some of the components back up and just make sure it still boots. For this, we're just using the patented, set it on there and don't move it technique. Got a red light, so that's a good sign. Okay, as you can see, we've got post, so everything is working after going through that little experiment of Plasti dipping everything. The North Bridge is already, already getting pretty warm, so we're gonna shut it down, but I just wanna make sure Everything's kind of working, so that's good. Um, we'll go ahead and shut her down now. All right, so we're back after giving that a quick little test, and the plastic dip didn't damage anything, so that's always good news. Uh, the, the one last thing to do is to go around some of these edges and in between the RAM slots just to make sure that there isn't any, any small areas that could make contact. And the next one we'll be looking at getting some liquid nitrogen and or dry ice. Giving this a try with the Bartek pot that I got in an earlier video. 
and we'll see you next time.